Hi, uh, Rory uh, with the Press Association. Um, Matthew, I guess this date has been circled in the calendar for a, for a long time now. How's the feeling around the, the squad now that it's it's here? Yeah, I think it's a, a really exciting opportunity for us as um, an associate nation to, to get to play England. We, Although we're very close to England, we don't seem to play them very often, but um, we've got great memories from the last time we played them. So to get to play them at a World Cup is pretty special. Yeah, as you say, it's the f- first T20 for incredible. Scotland. For, it, it is incredible. It, it, it's, what's, what, what's your thoughts on that? You, you're just over the road and you can't get a gig. Yeah, I'd like, you know, I'm waiting for the invitation to Lords to go and play them. So um, hopefully on the back of this, maybe we'll get one. But look, it's, it's an awesome opportunity for our guys and really a chance for us to go out and show what we're all about. And, and obviously 2018 there, you mentioned that was, that, that was the last time you played in any format and, and great memories. Good, good for yourself also. Can you just take us back and, I don't know, pick out your sort of the, def- the defining memory for yourself of that occasion? Um, I, I think for me, the, the, the best thing about the whole day was it was just such a good day. The sun was out in Scotland, uh, full house. And I think the most pleasing thing for me is England played a really good game of cricket. And I think that sometimes gets lost because we won. But I think they were exceptional on the day as well. You know, Johnny Bairstow scored an unbelievable 100. But we were just a little bit better. And I think the way the game got so tight at the end and so tense was just incredible. And I think just the pure emotion after of, of getting across the line, you know, something... We'd spoken about for a couple of years of sort of delivering those kind of performances and, and, and we did it. What, what does, uh, in 2020 cricket, what does this Scotland team need to do to, to beat England? What's the, what's the sort of your part of the deal that you have to fulfil? Score more runs than them. <laughs> um, no, look, I think, I think with T20 cricket, you, you know, everyone's got to, got to be there. They've got to be at it. But it it's kind of takes one or two individuals to have their best day. And I think that's sort of the... Um, the message we kind of send is, you know, expect to have your best day. And I think if you have your best day, we're going to be pretty close to, to winning a game. And that's that seems to be the way T20 cricket goes, is it's, it becomes an individual having a really good day or, or a collective team effort. And, and there is quite a few in the squad who, who were there in 2018 and who were part of that that match. Is that sort of, I don't know, that, that memory and that sort of physical memory of having been there and done it and, and knocked England off the perch, is, is that something that will be present on the field and helpful tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. I can't say we've spoken about it, to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't think anyone's really talked about it. But, you know, there is in the back of the memory that we've done this before and we've, we've beaten teams like England. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a confidence booster, but ultimately it'll mean nothing tomorrow in terms of turning up and getting the job done. What's my pain? Fantasy Pavilion. I um, just want to go back to when, you're, when the team would have seen the group stages, sort of the group that you all got. What was the reaction and what's your approach? Because, of course, two juggernauts in the group stages. In this tournament? Yes. Uh, look, we've got four games and we've got to win four games. I think there's not, not, nothing too complicated about it. Um, they're all teams. Um, well, I was going to say with all teams we've beaten. We've not beaten Australia, but um, we've beaten three of the four teams. So three, three out of four wins is going to be good enough to take us through. But we've got to take each day as it comes and, um, you know, we've got to earn the right to win these games. You would have looked, um, I'm sure you would have viewed the game last night, um, saw what the pitch is doing, what are your approach for tomorrow? Any notes, anything you know, that changed your perspective going into tomorrow's game based on the pitch? Uh, no, not really. I think it's going to be who adapts quickest. You know, it'll be a day game tomorrow, so the pitch will play differently, I'm sure. Um It'll just be about who can who can adapt the quickest and sort of find the, the best way to score runs. It, it might be a bit more attritional cricket in terms of it looked a bit lower and a bit slower, but I think um, we've been preparing for that. A lot of the Caribbean wickets have been quite similar, so I think I think we're ready to go. Um, Matt, does it feel different at all, the fact that this the format's changed so much for this World Cup and they've got rid of that, what you weren't allowed to call a qualification round? Uh, does, does it feel better to feel that you're part of this thing or do you just still look at it and go right well this is a group stage it's still a group stage I think I think you can look at it both ways ultimately the opportunity is greater because we get to play two of the top teams any which group you end up in so you know that's not always guaranteed and I think the cutthroat associate world means that it's you know a scrap to get through to the through from the qualifier um you know we had it hard last year with the you know getting so close uh sorry two years ago but um I think I think it works both ways. I think it's nice to have four games. Three games feels really quick, and you're on the flight home potentially before you even know it. So, I do quite like the new format, and I think there's there's a good opportunity for a team that plays well enough to to progress. Uh, and just sort of, I've got a batting and a bowling question, if that's okay. But batting wise, um, 
there have been a lot of changes sort of in the last couple of years with different players coming in. Got now Ollie's coming back as well. Is, is the, there have been a few changes in the matches leading up. Is, is that top order in particular, do you think it's quite settled? Has everyone just been having a go so they're ready? Uh I don't think it's like that. I think we have a couple of challenges with guys coming in and out of the squad. We had a couple of issues with visas. Um, so I think ultimately it presents opportunity for some of the younger lads and other players to have a go, which I think is, you know, important for their development. Um, I think we know, you know, speci uh, specifically the senior guys, what their, what their roles are and what's been expected. And I think Doug's been pretty clear about what he's expecting from us. So I don't think we're, we're searching for answers, if, if that makes sense. Get time down there. <laughs>